Good evening. Welcome to Evening Prayer for Saturday the 8th of October. I'm Reverend Nicole from the Parish of Cessnock. And it's a privilege to pray with you this evening. If you're following along in your prayer book, our service begins on page 422. Tonight we'll read a portion of Psalm 89 on page 316. And our scripture reading today is a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. As we begin our evening prayer, we acknowledge the ongoing custodianship of the First Nations people, who first walk the land on which our diocese meets and ministers and worships. We pay our respects to the Awabikul, Biripai, Darkingyung, Garigal, Giwagal, Kamilaroi, Waramai and Wanarua peoples, to their elders past, present and emerging. We commit ourselves to listening deeply and to the work of reconciliation among all people. Let us pray together. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. I invite you to say with me the opening canticle, the Song of the Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He shall make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The day is now past and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We turn to page 316 as we read a portion of Psalm 89, beginning at the 19th verse. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful one, I have set a youth above a warrior. I have exalted a young man out of the people. I have found my servant David and anointed him with my holy oil. My hand shall uphold him and my arm shall strengthen him. No enemy shall deceive him, nor shall the wicked hurt him. I will crush his adversaries before him and strike down those that hate him. My faithfulness and loving kindness shall be with him, and through my name his head shall be lifted high. I will set the hand of his dominion upon the western sea, and his right hand shall stretch to the streams of Mesopotamia. He will call to me, you are my father, my God and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn son and highest among the kings of the earth. I will ever maintain my loving kindness toward him and my covenant will, with him shall stand firm. I will establish his line forever and his throne like the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and will not walk in my judgments, if they profane my statutes, and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their rebellion with the rod and their iniquity with blows. But I will not cause my loving kindness to cease from him, nor will I betray my faithfulness. I will not profane my covenant or alter what has passed from my lips. Once and for all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not prove false to David. His posterity shall endure forever. 
and his throne be as the sun before him, like the moon that is established forever and stands in the heavens forevermore. Lord Christ, eternal word and light of the Father's glory, send your light and your truth that we may both know and proclaim your word of life to the glory of God the Father. For you now live and reign, God for all eternity. Amen. Our reading from Scripture tonight comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning at the 38th verse. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you, but he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so for three days and three nights the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah. And see, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. And see, something greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it wanders through waterless regions looking for a resting place, but it finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. When it comes, it finds empty, it finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings along seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and live there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. So will it be also with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside, wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, wanting to speak to you. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Let us take a few moments to reflect on our scriptures. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. I invite you to say with me the canticle, the Easter anthems. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For since by one man came death, by another has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our collect for today. Generous God, whose hand is open to fill all living things with plenteousness. Make us ever thankful for your goodness and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your bounty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the day that has been. We pray for your world. We pray for people throughout the world, those who live in the shadow of war and violence, those who are hungry and homeless, and those who have no place to call home. We pray for world leaders as they make decisions that affect us all and pray that those decisions would be inspired by you and be for the common good so that all people are drawn together as one. We pray for your church throughout the world. We give you thanks for the freedoms that we enjoy here to worship you without fear and pray those same blessings for those who are persecuted for their faith or for those who are yet to hear your name. We give you thanks for the ministry of our diocese. We pray for our bishops, Peter, Sonia and Charlie and for all who support them in the ministry and for their families. We pray for Samaritans and Anglican care and for our schools. We pray for the staff and students and their families of Newcastle Grammar School. And we pray for our parishes, for the people and clergy in all places throughout our diocese who serve their communities. And tonight we particularly pray for Christchurch Cathedral and Hamilton, for Katara, Lambton, Merriweather and Cook's Hill. We pray for the people that are on the margins of our society, for the lost, the lonely, the sad the, and the ignored. We pray that you would draw us together as one. That we would recognise the people that are on the margins, that we would invite them in that we would care for them and help them to come to know you. We pray for all who are sick and for all who care for them. We pray for people living in nursing homes and those who are in our hospitals and respite centres and rehabilitation centres pray your healing grace upon them. We pray for those who mourn and for all families devastated by the death of a loved one. Pray that you would be their hope and that they might see that this is true. So as our day ends, we offer to you all those things that we have not yet completed. We ask your blessings upon us and all that we have done this day and for the people that we have thought about and prayed for. We bring our prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come to visit us, Lord, this night, so that by your strength we may rise at daybreak to rejoice in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Have a beautiful evening, everyone. God bless.